Hey guys, it's Thursday, 5, 12 p.m. on March 26, 2020. And I have come across a handful of YouTube channels that have asked what seems to be a pretty good question. Why is it that we're shutting down our economy and all of the activity in our lives when only 1,200 people have died so far from coronavirus? But according to the CDC's own numbers, we know that between October 1st of 2019 and March 14th of 2020, 59,000 people have died of the flu. It seems to me between 59,000 people dying of the flu and 1,200 people dying of the coronavirus, we really need to get our priorities together because we're not shutting down the country for the flu, we're shutting down our country for the coronavirus. So I started asking some smart people the question, why? What does this all mean? And not very many people had an answer. So I decided to start crunching some numbers today. Now, the first round of numbers I started crunching were using the numbers from the CDC compared to what we know about the death rate in Italy. What I took was the number of infections of the flu that the CDC is reporting to us, and I used that as the benchmark to find the death rate with a death rate of 54,000. I know up to 59,000 have died, but if we use the number 54,000, it's much easier to calculate the death rate. And then you'll start to see why people would start panicking about the difference between COVID-19 and the flu. So let's take a look at this. If 54,000 people have died so far out of the 54 million people that have gotten infected, if we just run some quick numbers here, we're gonna find out that 54,000 people dying out of a population of 54 million that are infected, let's see, is that enough zeros? Leaves us with an incidence rate a death rate, I should say, of 001. Now, in order to find out what the percentage is, we multiply that time 100 and we find out that there is a 0.1% of the people who catch the flu die of the flu, which means out of 1,000 people who get the flu, only one person's gonna die. That's a pretty low mortality rate or fatality rate. Now, let's take a look at the numbers we know from Italy. And I have pointed out to you guys before that Italy's numbers seemed very high. And if that's the case, if this is really the death rate in Italy, then we have some problems. So let me demonstrate this to you. If the death rate is 7,500 people out of the known 74, 386 cases that we have in Italy, the death rate is 0.1. Now you multiply that times 100 and you suddenly start seeing the picture come into view. That means there's a 10% fatality rate with COVID-19 as the numbers we're getting from Italy. So let's take a look at what would happen if 54 million people catch COVID-19 at the death rate we're extrapolating from Italy. So let's take 54 million people who caught the flu and just pretend for a minute that they also caught or instead of catching the flu that they caught the coronavirus. Let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three, that's 54 million people. Let's just say 54 million people catch coronavirus and we're going to multiply that times 10%. Instead of getting 54,000 people that die, we would be getting 5,400,000 people that die. That's if the death rate is accurately reflected in the numbers of Italy. Now we can also do this with the numbers that we get in Spain. So hang in here with me guys, because this is not the full story. Let's take a look at what we have in Spain. In Spain, we were told today, these numbers are outrageous, but they're high. Let's look, in Spain, we were told that Spanish people, 4,300 Spanish people have died out of a population that we know of as 57, 786. And that gives us an incidence rate, a death rate of 0, 0,744. Now let's multiply that times 100. And we see that in Spain, the death rate, according to the numbers we're getting, getting from Spain, are 7.4%. Now, is that the whole picture? Let's go back here. We're gonna take 744 and we're gonna multiply that times our population. Let's just say that we get the Spain's death rate to 54 million people that got, if they get 54 million people get sick with COVID-19. Let's see, I keep thinking I put too many zeros here. So let me see, I only need six of them. Okay, divided by, no, I need, I'm sorry. Let me do this again. Sorry guys, 54, one, two, three, one, two, three, 
times 7.4, is that what I said? The, yeah, 7.4 percent, then you're still going to see 3,996,000 people sick and dying from COVID-19. So I talked to somebody about that and I'm like, well, no wonder everybody's freaking out. Look at the numbers. And that person said, oh, no, no. In truth, by grace, you can't calculate those numbers that way because what we know about what we're getting from Italy and from Spain are numbers that are calculated at the hospital. And this, you guys, is super duper important. The numbers we're getting from Italy and Spain are those numbers of the people who are going to the hospital that are very sick. And guess what we have? We have from the CDC the number of hospitalizations. So here, finally, after running through these numbers all day long, I have finally been able to calculate apples to apples. We know that according to the CDC, 710,000 people showed up at the hospital with the flu. And of those 710,000 people who showed up at the hospital with the flu, 59,000 of them died, which means the death rate is 8.3%. 8.3%? Hmm. That's right smack dab in the middle between what the death rate is in Italy at 10% and the death rate is in Spain. This is the incidence of people who are dying after they get to the hospital. And that's all we can calculate because you know what, guys? Italy hasn't done broad spectrum calculations or testing. All they know are the people who show up at the hospital who can't breathe. And those are the numbers of people that are dying. 7,500 people who show up at the hospital out of the 74,000 that they've tested at the hospital have died. So this brings us right back to the equation. Why is it that we are closing down our economy for a death rate that is halfway between what Spain is experiencing and Italy is experiencing that we experience for the common flu? So I thought I'd share those numbers with you. Hopefully that made sense. Hopefully you guys will, uh, will know what I'm talking about here because I'm not, I'm not trying to make this more complicated, but depending on how you crunch these numbers, this really matters or this really doesn't. It's not fair to compare 1,200 people who died here to the 59,000. That's not fair. What you have to compare is the rate. Now, if the numbers from Italy and Spain are accurately reported of the people who've showed up to be hospitalized, and for example, in Italy now, it's up to 8,200 people out of 8,000. That's actually even higher than 10%. It's a little bit higher than 10%. In Spain, I just calculated that's, you know, what, roughly 70%. These numbers aren't that outrageous. It just depends on how many people we have that are sick in this country. So don't panic, you guys. Just don't panic, but just understand that when we're comparing apples to apples, we really can't just compare the numbers, what we have to compare is the rate. And it looks like if you're using hospitalizations as your benchmark, COVID-19 has about as many hospitalizations and incidents of death as any other illness. So that, 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 like the flu. So we'll keep that in mind. Take care.